welcome to Benevola United Methodist Church. It's a joy to welcome you here on this June morning, a day in which we get to celebrate our graduates, our graduates of both high school and college. We are so proud of them, and we will uh, recognize them later on in our service. But I do want to uh, make mention of some announcements this morning. Inside, you'll see a list of all of our graduates, too, with their pictures. Uh, but if I want to take a look at the calendar for the week, we do have an admin council meeting on Monday at 630. So if you are a chair member or you would like to attend that meeting, I encourage you to come out tomorrow evening at 630. We meet upstairs in the Sunday school room. We also have some information about Vacation Bible School on the page two. You'll see that we're having Vacation Bible School coming up at the end of the month. Uh, you are encouraged to come out. We'll also offer it at the end of July, too. Doing something different this year, kind of splitting up between the two months. So if you're on vacation, uh, you'll get a chance to come back and enjoy at another time. But we also are in need of volunteers, too. So I encourage you to reach out to Nicole Conway. Uh, Nicole, did you have any more thing more to say about that? Great. Tuesday, next Tuesday, or this Tuesday, two days from now. So Tuesday, 630, Vacation Bible School meeting. Uh, we are in need of some help with that. Other announcements that I can bring forward this morning for the good of the people? That's all I've got. All right, well, let's get into our worship this morning. If you can, stand as you're able and let us join in our call to worship found on your bulletin or on the screen. Please stand as you are able. Some of us come today with hearts weighed down with anxiety, fear, despair, and hurt. Together we cling to this truth. God's steadfast love endures forever. Some of us come today with hearts that feel light with relief, joy, comfort, and gratitude. Together we cling to this truth. God's steadfast love endures forever. Some of us come today not knowing what we think about God, confused and disappointed that the world God made is so full of evils of every kind. And together we cling to this truth. God's steadfast love endures forever. Be with us, God, in all that we bring with us as we gather to encounter your unchanging love. God, your steadfast love endures forever. Let's sing Great is Thy Thankfulness, or Great is Thy Faithfulness on page 140 in our hymnals.
We can certainly speak of God's great faithfulness in our lives and as we walk through our lives and in the milestones that we come across. And today we celebrate one of those milestones, which is our graduates, our graduates who've made it through the school year uh, and the parents too, and the community that has surrounded our graduates. We are so proud of them. And uh, you'll see inside our, your bulletin um, a little write-up of some of the graduates who uh, have uh, gone on to do great things in their school careers and the futures that are coming forward. And those are just some of the names and pictures that we have located there in our brochure. Uh, but I'd like to invite Brenda, uh, if you could come up and help me. What we'd like to do is recognize our graduates and have them come up front. I'm not going to have you speak. We just want to give you a special gift to honor your graduation and uh, something to remember us uh, as your church congregation as we support you in your journey. So as I call your name, uh, please stand and come up front and we will uh, give you a special gift. It is not only a gift card uh, to Amazon, because everybody could use a gift card to Amazon, right? It helps pay for some things. Uh, but we also have a bookmark to help you tag off those textbooks, if you even have a physical textbook anymore, uh, and a pen that has encouragement on it. So when you're taking notes or writing notes, uh, you can know that your church is praying for you and, and loving you. So with that, we will recognize our graduates. Uh, and for those who are not present, if you're watching online or are unable to be here, uh, we will mail out uh, these gifts if we don't have anybody waiting for them after church today. If y your, your student is not here or if you know they're not here because they're on vacation, uh, see Brenda after church today and she'll make sure that they get their gifts, okay? So we recognize in the class of 2024, we recognize Sam Atkinson. Alexi Chestnutwood, Chloe Coulter, Mason Galkenier. <laughs> I know he's here. <laughs> Josie Hardings, Sophie Hauk, Tracy Kinzer. Lilia Mills, Caitlin Nave, Drake Rotman, Brett Sharpless, Zachary Stanfield, and Peyton West. We are so proud of these students who have graduated high school, but also graduated college as well. And uh, we know that they have a bright future to go on further from this day forward, right? All good things, all to the glory of God. Friends, I would ask that you be in a moment of prayer. We are going to speak a prayer over them and a blessing over them, as well as a blessing for those who just finished up the school year too. So let us bow and go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for these students who are among us who are graduating and who have graduated. We thank you for the gifts that you have given them and for this milestone in their journey. And we ask that you bless them, whether they be here this morning or if they are unable to attend this morning. We ask that you bless them as they head out to whatever is next for them. Continue to inspire them with dreams and visions and a future that might be what you have called them to do, where they can build up your kingdom in this world. And Lord, remind us that we are all called to fill a place, to share our gifts and our passions, and to continue to educate ourselves and to grow closer to you. Help us to be inspired, Lord. May these students that are in front of us today inspire us to go and do more. Bless these young people and those around the world who are transitioning into this new journey. Equip them, inspire them, and strengthen them. And even this end of school year, Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for all the teaching, all the learning that has taken place. We give you thanks for the gifts and talents that have been shared 
and the challenges that have been faced and all the tests that have been done. We give you thanks, Lord, for the students, the teachers, the administrators, the helping staff, the, the parents and the guardians as they've wrapped their school year up and they're waiting for either another one to begin or waiting for whatever is next in the chapter. Lord, bless them and their families, and may they be renewed by your spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we add this blessing. Amen. Can we have a round of applause for our recent graduates? Congratulations. 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 They're all taller than me. That's okay. Me and Brenda, we'll be back here. We're representing short people, right? Again, if your student was not here today to be recognized um, or that you know that they're on vacation, uh, we will be mailing out uh, gifts, but uh, you can see Brenda at the end of the service, and she'll be happy to uh, give you their uh, gift card and thank them. Well, friends, now that we move into our times of lifting up our joys and our concerns, what can we pray for one another with, and how can we be blessing with one another? Yes, Klaus. He rose with my on the milestone of 50 years of wedding bliss. And the flowers today are in honor of their anniversary today. Daisies at our wedding. Daisies at the wedding. He remembered. Daisies at the wedding. Or Becky did. We'll say he did too. <laughs> Congratulations. And for golden, the yellow. It, it's all thematic. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sharon. I'm not sure I'm that excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will be uh, celebrating and uplifting you in prayer 59 years. <laughs> Absolutely. Congratulations. Other, other items that we can pray for this morning. Ed, good morning. Absolutely. Amen. We recognize and uh, many across the nation celebrated the 80th anniversary for D-Day. And many of our family members uh, may have been involved in that occurrence. Uh, but we give thanks for the men and women that dedicated and served and risked their lives and sacrificed so that freedom can reign. Uh, and we are grateful for that. Thank you for lifting that up. And you continue to remind us. Others to lift up. Tom. To all of our present military and those serving currently to this day, we give thanks to them and pray over them as they serve. Melinda. Praying for the family of Brad Myers. Brad Myers passed uh, in a tragic accident recently. And Dustin Myers' family in prayer. Yes, Shonda. Yes, 
to baby Ruthie, who is going to be having heart surgery on Easter Wednesday. And um, and yes, Emily. Oh, your friend Susan, who we've been praying for, she got out of the hospital. Continue healing prayers for Susan and those who are coming alongside uh, to help her in her healing. Well, let us go to God in prayer, shall we? Will you bow your heads with me? Holy and gracious God, as we come together in this time of prayer with you, we know that you are present with us. We have seen your presence in a smile today, or maybe in a handshake, or perhaps a warm embrace that we have received from someone. Thank you for the ways that you show up for us, and thank you for the ways in which we can experience your grace. We know that you desire for us to be honest with you, and that we turn things over to you that we are carrying. Lord, we have lifted up aloud many joys and, and things that lie on our hearts, things to celebrate, anniversaries to uh, celebrate, even birthdays that probably go unknown, and, and those who are achieving great milestones in their lives, Lord. We thank you for the ways that you show up for us, whatever they look like. Thank you for being a God who cares about us collectively and individually. And God, we also, in the same breath, we lift up the concerns that we carry, concerns for our world, concerns for our community, for our friends, for our family, and even ourselves. Help us to release them to you today. We have lifted up the names aloud that are in need of your care, those who need to feel a warm embrace or perhaps just your gentle comfort. But we also still have those many things that lie on our hearts that we cannot utter aloud, Lord. And we know that you hear us. You hear our prayers. And to know that your presence is here, you walk alongside with us. We thank you. We thank you for this church and for this community. We thank you for our leaders, both local and national and we ask that your love and grace be poured over all of them. And to be poured over us as well, Lord. We seek forgiveness in the ways in which we have stumbled this week. We confess to you, Lord, places in which we may have said something wrong or did something wrong. And, and Lord, we may be wrestling with something too. Silently in our hearts, we name those before you. We know your grace is bigger than we can imagine, and your love overwhelms us, and that your forgiveness is there for us, and it sets us free. Help us to claim the freedom that you give us. Help us to walk in your ways and bridge a gap where you want us to be in this world. And when we are at loss for words, Lord, we pray the prayer and lift our voices together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. Well, let us take this opportunity to offer the peace of Christ to one another as our children make their way down here for kids' time. So turn to your neighbor and say, the peace of Christ be with you. And then in your next neighbor say, the peace of Christ be with you. And maybe turn to somebody you don't know and say, peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with everyone who is watching online. Glad you're here this morning. Looking forward to sharing the word for you and, and hoping God speaks to you. Make sure you leave a comment below so that we know that you're here.
Peace of Christ with you. Peace of Christ with you. I saw you sneak in. Peace of Christ. How you doing? Oh, glad you're healing. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt for the moment, but getting through. I understand that. God bless that guy. I've been praying for you. Yeah, yeah. Why? Is it your nickname? Oh, co okay, cool. Yeah, and what's your nickname? Mr. Domino. <laughs> good Lord of mercy. Well, goodness gracious. Now, are, are you the only one that was in children's church? That's okay. That's all right. Well, I'm so glad to see you all this morning. We have, actually, I've got a song to teach you this morning. Yes. And it's kind of an easy one to learn because today in worship, we're going to talk about a word called immutable. Can you say immutable? Yes, immutable. That means unchanging, it means unchangingness. And it's, it's a way that we describe God. And then, I don't know about you, but it's really hard to describe God. Can you describe God? He cares for the world. So that's a really big God, isn't it? Because the world is pretty big. And so we really can't find the language to encapsulate everything about God. But we can talk about God in the matter of bigness or greatness. And that is a song that I want to teach you all today. And it even has hand motions, too, if you want to do them. Because it's actually an old cheerleading cheer that I did a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And I can't believe I remember it. But I figured it would be fun to learn uh, the song today. So it is really simple to sing. And so just repeat after me. Great big God. God is great. Great big God. God is great. Great big God. God is great. G-R-E-A-T. Yes, great job. That's all the song is. So it goes like this, and I'll show you the hand motions with it, too. So you have to clap with it, too, because it's a cheer as well, right? So, great big God, God is great, great big God, God is great, great big God, God is great, G-R-E-A-T, great big God, sing it, God is great, great big God, God is great, great big God. God is great. Raise your hand. G R E A T. Great big God. God is great. Great big God. God is great. Great big God. God is great. G R E A T. Woo! And then you take your pom poms and you shake them all over the place. Now, let me tell you, that is a song all about how great God is and how big he can be, too, because he can be great as in really big or great because he's awesome. No matter what, we can share with our friends how great our God is. And hopefully that song will get stuck in your head and you'll sing it at 2 o'clock in the morning and annoy your parents with it. That's what I plan to do and <laughs> hope you do too. So, one more time. Ready? Great big God. God is great. Great big God. God is great. Great big God. God is great. G R E A T. <laughs> All right. Good job. Good job. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for being so great and for being in our lives. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You can go back to Children's Church or to your parents. There they go. And we will hear our scripture reading this morning. This morning's scripture lesson is Psalm 138, the Psalm of David. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. 
When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the things of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of the word that you've given us this day. And help us to take this word and write it upon our hearts. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So, immutable. Say that word. Very good. Immutable. We don't use that word enough in our everyday language. Immutable. Now, mutable is not heard very much, and it actually means unchangedness, unchangingness. Uh, it's one of the attributes, like I said with the children, that we give to God and how we can explain God in some ways. Immutable, unchanging God. Today's scripture doesn't really contain the word immutable, but it doesn't contain it directly. It does, though, give praise to this never-changing God if you listen closely to its words that is shared. It changes. There's no change in the unloving, or the unimmutable love that is present. And in fact, not many people are apt to share their thanks and praise like a psalmist does. I mean, do you have people coming up in your life giving thanks and praise like a psalmist? Have you ever heard them coming up to you and say, Oh, God is great today. I thank the stars for him. He's so good. I mean, do, you, do you hear that on an everyday basis? I don't even hear it on an everyday basis. I have to look in the psalm to hear it. But why is it that way? Why is it so, so hard to share praises about God or to even hear about praises about God? thinking about this, and perhaps it's back in our formation, in our childhood. Maybe not your childhood per se, but in my childhood. Maybe where I first started this, uh, this idea of criticism and critiques, and, and maybe that it's easier to complain than it is to praise, right? I think it is a little easier to complain than it is to praise. We complain to our nurses and doctors all the time, but do we ever praise them when they're at the doctor's office? I don't think so. What's wrong? Head mic's cutting out. It's turned on. I'm just going to use the pulpit mic. How's that? Okay. Whatever's happening is happening. Well, guess what? I'm not going to complain because... God is good, and I praise. But I got to thinking about where our complaining uh, starts up in our childhood. And for me, it started with The Muppet Show. Y'all remember that show, The Muppet Show? There was two individuals in particular on that show that complained all the time, right? Yes, Statler and Waldorf. They were the best, in my opinion. They were the two puppets of old men that sat in the balcony in the theater, and they watched all the acts during the puppet or during the Muppet Show, and they would heckle the performers, and they were hysterical with their their jokes. We would call them dad jokes today because they really are kind of corny and cheesy, like dad jokes can be. But I appreciate them. Well. All of their jokes and their comments were followed by what? The infamous laugh. You remember it, right? If you watched it, oh, ho, 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 ho. that's how they would laugh. In fact, my brothers do a great impression of them. Now, this was funny, but that was the formation of where criticism and complaining, I think, took place in my childhood. But it's not the only place, of course. You know, news outlets, social media outlets, 
they amplify critics' voices. They amplify and cultivate complaints. And we pick up behaviors from this, too. In fact, we also pick up behaviors of those who complain in our lives. So if it's a parent or an uncle or an aunt, or maybe it's your siblings, or perhaps it's yourself, we can pick up the voices of those who are close to us. So Psalm 138 is a song of thanksgiving, and it can feel a little too sweet because we're used to hearing more complaints about anything. In 2018, though, Diana Butler Bass, she released a book called Grateful, The Transformative Power of Giving Thanks. And she discovered the power of gratitude. During a hard time in her life, she had nothing but complaints in her vocabulary. She complained and she griped because she couldn't find anything good in the world. Well, after a conversation with one of her friends, her friend asked her to write down at least one thing that she was thankful for every day. And even though she rolled her eyes at the activity, she tried it. And over time, her journal began to transform her. She found that she was able to name more than one thing on a day. And she was giving thanks as the days gone by. She was thankful for air. She was thankful for the pillow she laid her head down on. Thankful for the house that she lived in, for the food that she ate. She found appreciation for the simple pleasures, for the kindness of others, and for the richness of life. Now those thanks were echoed with complaints because she was in a time of grieving. And she said that even on the hardest days, she tried to keep her heart open wide enough to find the good. It was challenging, but she accepted the challenge. And she said that when she started seeing life through soft eyes, that is, paying attention to what she could be grateful for, she began making sense of her life and making sense of the world differently. And that didn't mean that the complaints went away. Her perspective had changed, and she experienced God through that perspective. When we pay close attention, or when we see things with soft eyes, we can see how God shows up in our lives, even in the midst of heartache and pain. When we are grateful, we are awakened to God's immutable love, the unchanging love, and God's activity in our lives and in the world. Gratefulness helps us to see where God is still speaking. Sometimes we like to feel that our God is so big that we can't see where God is working. But if we look close enough, we can see God in even the smallest things, that God has never changed, that God is still caring for us, and that God is worthy of our thanks. And the psalm writer, the psalm writer knows this truth. The writer speaks for a community that remembers its own trauma. Now, while Psalms 138 and Psalm 139 are more popular because they are psalms about praise and thanksgiving, If you flip back to Psalm 137, you'll find the heartbreak that the Israelites went through and their people went through. In Psalm 137, you'll find the recollection of the trauma experienced in the Babylonian exile. Remember when the Babylonians came over and captured Israel and took them from their land and treated them as slaves? and made them do all kinds of things in and away from their homeland, whenever they were released from the Babylonians, they recalled and recaptured their trauma. They did not ignore the pain or the anguish that they went through and experienced. You know, 137, Psalm 137, that's not the sunshine and rainbows uh, song. (laughs) In fact, 
It's interesting that 137 and 138 are side by side. You have trauma and disarray next to thanksgiving and praise. And that's kind of what we do. When we weather our storms and go through hard times, we can look back and give thanks and praise to God who is never changing and is always there. And I wonder if Psalm 138 was among the, uh, the writers that were in the exile and recalling and how many generations back it was recalling. And it's almost like a gratitude journal. You know, he's, he's thankful for God. Yes, the captors were cruel, and yes, they had hard times, and they wanted to go home, but now that they are home, they saw God's hand in the sunset. They see God moving among them, and they give praise to God, even when they felt like they couldn't go on another day. Perhaps they experienced God in an embrace or maybe a conversation. They saw the little things and recorded it for us. There are times that I look at the Bible as not only sacred texts, as holy texts, but also as a collection of writings full of small glimmers of God at work, God's presence, God's grace, God's gifts treasured and captured and preserved in writing for us to read. It's almost like a really big gratitude journal, you know? People wrote down their experience, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that it would speak about these flickers of God's unchanging love and unchanging ways in the midst of awful situations. I mean, if you read the Bible close enough, especially in the Old Testament, you'll see some awful situations. And that will speak to us. And it was written down down exactly for us so that we can remember to look out for the immutable and fullness of God in this moment, whatever we are going through. Today, the psalmist invites us to notice God's presence, God's grace, gifts, and to be thankful and grateful when you look at the world with soft eyes and notice the places where you have felt God's outstretched, guiding and supporting love, what do you see? Are you able to see God's outstretched hand for you? I know for myself it takes a little work. But this week, I wanted to share what I saw. I was on Facebook. And I saw pictures of youth who made it through the last week of school. Some parents put baby pictures out there of the kids when they started first grade or maybe even more. And then they showed the last day of school, right? The first and last. What I see is not only a child who's grown up, but I also see how God is working to raise up a compassionate and loving young person and to create a better world for who knows what the future holds for that young one. But you can see in the honoriness of their smiles, and I can't wait to hear what they, more they do. I hear it, God's voice in the individuals who were up against all sorts of obstacles this year. And I'm grateful for the ways that they are looking ahead with hope and expectation, even when I think they should be complaining and cultivating a, a, a cynical attitude. No, they are praising. And that gives me hope. And that encourages me to sing of God's praise. I listen to it in the sound of our choir and see the different people serving and the different ministries of the church. Wow! I marvel at our immutable God who endows us with creative gifts, right? And I also bear witness to a God in a community 
when a family calls out in times of need of sickness, God forms like a separate community to surround that family with care and to show up for that family. Praise God for his willingness. Praise God for empathy and provision. You know, I talked to a group of pastors this week who tell me constantly that they are at odds because they have small churches and they're just not seeing them grow. But our immutable and changeable God is showing up and doing amazing things in those small churches. They have prayer shawl memories. They have all kinds of cards that are being sent out and cared for and signed by uh, people of the church to let others know that they are loved. They are providing space for people to come, whether they be a troubled spouse or parent, a sibling or a friend. They are welcoming them into their space regardless of their situations. Oh, God, we praise you for showing up in those small churches and in the ways that we cannot see you. But I wonder for you, friends, where do you sense God's hand stretching toward you? Where do you notice God's immutable love in your life? What has God brought you through that you can celebrate and praise? Now, perhaps you're still full of criticism and still full of complaints, and that's okay. But can you maybe narrow out one thing that you are thankful for, whether it be the air you breathe or the sight that you see? One thing, to look with soft eyes at the immutable love of God that is around you. And despite all the grumbling that is going on around us, I wonder where God is showing up. Where is God showing up? I can tell you I see God showing up here this morning. And God has shown up throughout this week. And I know God will continue to show up throughout the week. What praise and thanksgiving can we lift up? I give God praise and thanksgiving for giving me up this morning. You know how hard it's to get up in the morning whenever you have a cat meowing at you at 2 o'clock in the morning and you want to go back to sleep and you can't? Praise God. He got me up got my husband up and got us here on time to give him praise, right? It could be as simple as that. Where is God showing up? If it's just one thing, even the smallest thing, may we share those stories about our immutable God and that we have a song to sing about the love of this immutable God. And together we say, thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. Let us give our best back to God as God has given to us. It's a chance to show our worship through our giving. I'll invite our ushers to come forward to collect today's tithes and offerings.
God of all creation, we offer our gifts, celebrating your love that endures forever. Bless these offerings so they may reflect your love in our community and beyond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn this morning on 654. We'll sing the first verse only. week that you are grateful for, that you can give praise for, then maybe tomorrow find another thing. You never know. It might grow and grow and grow. But know that God is great because we got a great big God, and God is great, and that we can find praise. And if you need help finding praise, call me up. I'll be a cheerleader. I can help you find something that God has blessed you with. But go now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and be blessed to love and serve the Lord. Amen.